Salut everyone, I'm Air Max. We are in October 2022. Everybody is excited about the release of the 4090 RTX NVIDIA card. I'm kind of excited too, but there is something else that really excited me for the last, I would say like five months. It's this baby here. The Intel Arc A380. Yes. It did excite me, dude. <laughs> Am I still excited about it? Uh, I don't know. I received it like last Friday. And man, it has been a real, real, real chaos. Since then. Let me talk about it. Let's start with the beginning. If you are not aware of it, like Intel released their discrete GPU at the beginning of... Uh, uh, June 2022. Uh, this one, the A380, was the first one released. They have like a full line of product. It's called like Intel Arc A Series Graphic or Alchemist. Forget, sorry, forgive my uh, French accent here. Don't really know how to pronounce this word, but they have a full lineup of product. The A380 being like the, the smallest one. And when you look at, at the way they market it, it's really about like gaming, creating, and streaming experience. From my perspective, as a Linux enthusiast, I'm super excited because the drivers are open source, which means that on paper, you should like just be able to grab the card, put it in your computer, and use it, right? Like an AMD card. And <laughs> dude, listen to me. It didn't really work that way. I I'm going to get into it uh, a little bit later in the video but first i want you guys to understand what i saw in this card what i saw in this card was not really like the performance they are selling to me or you know the gaming aspect of it if you are really into gaming if you are an esport like competitor you are not going to buy this lineup of cards let's let's be clear you're gonna go toward nvidia maybe amg but it's, it's not the best the potential I've seen in it was really around like streaming and creating content. And I'm going to tell you why. Interesting, in my opinion, is the hardware encoding and decoding they, they put in this little beast. H264, H265 hardware encode and decode, but also the AV1 encode and decode. If you are not aware about AV1, that's going to be the future of all the streaming platform. YouTube like started to implement it. And the reason behind it is like this format is totally like open and royalty free. You know, knowing you have something like that in this little baby, it's, it's, it's super exciting. The other part of everyone, which is like super exciting is, um, actual like ability to encode as a, at a really really high quality and a low low bit rate so when you look at the spec of this card the encoder is really like the reason why you want to get into it in my opinion when you look at the av1 encoding you are at the top of the chart here okay which which is pretty impressive like what it means it means that with this card if twitch like finally like implement av1 within their uh, ingest server you could literally stream at 4k on twitch with a crazy like video quality at the same bit rate just, just to give you an idea of the potential right and if you look at how fast this card is encoding to uh it's encoding at 130 fps this 4k stream which means like you could encode live to stream with the same card at this quality and to me like that's that's the reason why this card is really really interesting on paper okay so at this point of the video you are like whoa this card is perfect for content creator streamer like people who are in this industry and will want to you know just encode things in general right well <laughs> <laughs> there is a catch it's not really working yet 
Before we get into the complication I encountered, I want to settle like the way I test this thing and what was required to make those tests work. First thing you're going to be required if you want to get one of these cards is to make sure like your hardware support resizable bar for the GPU. So you need to have a special CPU and a special motherboard that actu can actually um, support resizable bar. If you don't own that, forget about Intel Arc or lineup. It just won't work. Second thing is like, I intend to use this card in a server, headless server. I don't use it. I don't intend to use it to work in a desktop environment. I don't want to play game with it. I just want to encode transcode. And what good news I learned uh, through this testing is like this card is supported through PCI pass through. So I know in the past, like some of the NVIDIA cards were simply like not compatible or you had to do like crazy workaround to make it work. Well, good news, PCI pass through work. Uh, you go to the Proxmox wiki page and you go through GPU pass through. I use a GPU OVMF PCI Express pass through. It worked 100%. Good news. Now let's talk about the card itself. Thinking you're going to put it into the server and you will have like everything recognized, driver loaded, everything working is plain wrong. Even if you go through all those articles from Phoenix and also a lot of video, I'm just mentioning those articles there, which are like pretty positive when you think about it. Like I won't go through all of them, but it, it looked like it worked. Uh, the overall consensus from Phoenix is that, you know, it's, you know, after months of hearing all sorts of rumors and further online about the state of Intel R graphic, uh, blah, 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 went better, like, you know, like the test went better than expected. So, you know, you go there confident and you're like, okay, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be solid. But when you go to the forum and you look at the actual user experience, right? It's, it's not the same. So look at this guy here. It's a latest comment on one of the article, 22 October. Uh, cyber reality. I spent the day reinstalling Ubuntu 22.04 and following the step from Intel's page exactly. I did not install anything else of the system. Right now, it's basically not even functioning, even with Intel special kernel and driver. Put the Arc A750 in the closet. We'll wait a few months before I bother testing again. So, you know, I went through that and in my head I was like, okay. You know, maybe this guy made a mistake, but this guy is actually right. It doesn't work, or at least it doesn't work as the extent you expect from it. So if you put it in your computer, you want to build, you know, have a desktop environment working. This is going to work. Okay, like you're going to have like screen, it, it, it's going to work. If you want to grasp all of the functionality capability of the card you're gonna have to do multiple extract step uh, which are here like provided uh, by intel and for resuming them what what you need to be doing and it, it's gonna sound crazy but is there is like i think like three big things you need to do first you need to load the Intel like specific firmware related to the card, okay? This is not an easy task. The way Intel is selling it to you right now is that they want you to install like a special like package repository and go through like their special like custom kernel and custom like DKMS way of loading a firmware um, to, to, to make it work, right? So they have their Linux EOM kernel, they have like the DKNS, DKMS kernel module and their specific like, you see like D, uh, DKMS like firmware, like GPU related to this specific product, okay? But what I notice is like, if you go through that and you have the firmware installed, you have the right like driver installed, the driver will actually work within specific firmware, you're going to have another problem because 
this is not enough for you to use FFMPEG, which is where like most of the encoding and decoding capabilities are going to go through. Because when I try to build the custom version of FFMPEG, I noticed that some of the library dependency which were related to building FFPNG like were just not working. It, it just doesn't work because when you build it, most of the time it will take the last, lastest like master like Git version and it won't be aligned with the firmware and the driver you're going to get in Ubuntu like there. So to, to get to this conclusion, I spent like almost 30 hours. I did the Ubuntu install. I did the compiling of FFMEPG. I went the full archway, edge, rolling, like distribution, compiling everything like last second of what was on the Git, getting the latest firmware, getting the latest kernel, like compiling them by hand. It took me 30 hours. Uh, by the way, like 6.1 RC is it, a nightmare. It, even with my Threadripper, like I was struggling. It took me like 25 gigabytes of space on my hard drive. This thing is huge, like just, just uh, not on the side. Anyways, what I wanted to share with you is like, it's, it's just not working. It doesn't work. I'm not the only one to be in that position. And I think like the main reason for all this mess is the fact that you need everything aligned to work. Like you have to have the firmware to work with the driver, to work with the Intel one API stuff, which need to be aligned with the FFMPG um, implementation building. Don't waste your time. Today, it just doesn't work. We are end of October 2022. This is the real purpose of this video. Like it, it, it just doesn't work. So you want, you want to see a funny part? I installed like uh, Windows. Okay, pass through the graphic card. Took me one second to download the driver. Uh, I downloaded like a, you know a recent like Git uh, build of FFMPG. And look at this: AV1, Intel QuickSync, video acceleration, boom, supported. It works right off the bat. Everything works on Windows. I'm gonna move my box. I'm gonna continue to test this in Windows. If you are interested, just please, please like make a comment below. Tell me if you want me to go deeper with Windows. I, I, I want to try to transcode my live stream. I want to try it like a little bit deeper. Like obviously I'm going to be limited by Windows because I can do everything I want within Windows. But at least, you know, I'm going to have an idea of his real potential. Uh, guys, if you want, if you have any idea of how I could test this card, like please leave a comment below. Uh, if you are struggling with the car too, like I will be really happy to hear like from you guys. If you find a solution I couldn't go through here, please, you know, like share it with me in the comment below. Um, but yeah, that's, that's actually like, I was kind of like funny and not funny. I spent like, again, like 30 hours trying to make it work on Linux. It took me like 10 minutes to make it work on, on Windows. So what did we learn in this little adventure? Well, we learned that uh, it's, it's really tough uh, to be an early adopter on Linux. Let's be clear. I think those problems are going to be like fixed in the near future. I would say like six months at least because there is a lot to work on. I would say like this card, if you want to use it on Linux, well, it's going to be a good paperweight for the next six months. Okay, at least. Maybe it's going to be faster. I hope so. Guys, if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe. Please uh, look at my Patreon. Give me a like at this video. Become a member if you like what you have seen. I will come back with uh, more content to with this card. Okay, like toward like this card because I still believe in this card. It's just not ready yet for Linux. Hopefully uh, next week I'm going to be streaming out of this card and we'll see if there is a real like improvement in terms of quality within the stream. So I'm streaming Monday, Wednesday and Friday on this channel on YouTube. 
And I'm also multi-streaming on all the other platforms. But the main content is here on YouTube. Guys, thanks again for watching. I want to also thank all the Patreon who helped me doing what I do. And that's it. That's all. See you in the next video. Have a great one and take care.